Hello, my name is Tomasz Jaszek, and in this video I will talk about solutions to the Spooktober challenge powered by Codility. In this challenge we have n stacks of coins placed in a row. In one move we can take two coins from any stack, remove one coin, and put the other coin uh, in adjacent stack. And by using such moves we would like to accumulate as many coins as possible on one stack. And the question is how many coins we can accumulate. So let's analyze the first example in which we have four uh, stacks of sizes 2, 3, 1 and 3 respectively. A valid move would be taking two coins from the first stack, removing one of them and putting the second one uh, on the stack number two. That would result with an empty first stack and with four coins on the second stack. Since most of the coins are on the second stack, let's try to move more coins there. We cannot make a move from the first stack to the second stack because we have only one coin on the third stack. But we can move one coin from the fourth stack to the third stack and remove additional coin from the fourth stack. And then we have two coins on the third stack, so we can make additional move and put another coin on the second stack. This way we end up with five coins on the second stack. We can split a solution to this problem into two sub-problems. First, we need to decide on which stack we want to accumulate the coins. And after this decision is made, we need to move the remaining coins to this stack in optimal way. Let's solve the second sub-problem first. Suppose we selected the stack on which we would like to accumulate the coins. This splits the row of stacks into two parts. Uh, the stacks on the left side of the selected stack and the stacks on the right side. Since we would like to put as many of these coins into the selected stack, it seems the best we can do is to move all the coins from the left part to the right and all the coins from the right part to the left. And it's true because if we move some coin on the left part uh, to the left, we will pay one coin for this move. But ultimately we would need to move this coin back and we would pay another coin for this. So in the end we pay two coins and we gain nothing in return. Since every move has a determined direction, we can make them efficiently. When we consider a stack of size A, we can make there uh, A over 2 pairs of coins, so we can perform this number of moves simultaneously. This is also why it's good to analyze the stacks on the left part from left to right, because uh, after making moves on the leftmost stack, we know that we won't be putting additional coins uh, on the stack, so this stack is um, completely analyzed. And we can move to the next one and do the similar thing here. Finally, we'll move a coin from the left part to the selected stack. And we can repeat the same process for the right part, but now we'll start from the rightmost stack. The time complexity of this greedy process of moving the coins is linear in the number of stacks since uh, we investigate each stack exactly once. But what about the first sub problem of selecting in which stack to accumulate the coins? Well, we can create a working solution by examining every stack as a candidate for accumulation. This way we would end up with a solution of total complexity n squared because we need to make additional loop uh, iterating over all stacks. I think we are ready for implementation. First we define a variable in which we'll store our answer and then we make a loop over all candidates uh, for a stack in which we will accumulate uh, the coins. So here we accumulate coins on the stack number i and we can do this by um, 
pushing some coins from the left part uh, which contains uh, of uh, stacks uh, smaller than i and uh, some coins from the right part which contains uh, the stacks bigger than i so let's suppose that we have a helper function that calculates how many coins we can take from a part so then the total number of coins is the number of coins from the left part plus the number of coins which are already on the uh, stack number i and the number of coins from the uh, right part uh, but since the uh, function calc will assume that we are taking the coins from the left right we need to reverse the order of the stacks on the right part and we can do this uh, uh, in such a way in, uh, in Python. So that means that we are reversing the order of the stacks. Uh, and when we calculate the number of coins, we need to uh, update our answer. And at the end, we just return this variable. All right, so let's uh, move to the helper function, uh, which takes uh, stacks from the part and um, calculates how many coins we can uh, we can take from these stacks. Uh, so we will be analyzing stacks from left to right, and uh, we will also store a variable coins. Um, in which we'll store the number of coins which can be moved from the previous stacks into currently analyzed stack. So for the leftmost stack, obviously this number is equal to zero. So when we analyze the stack, the number of coins we can move from this stack further um, is the number of coins we can get from previous stacks plus number of coins in the current stack and we must divide this number by two because this is the number of moves we can make. So we put it as a new value of uh, variable coins. And at the end, we will return uh, the value of this variable because this is the number of coins we can take from the whole part. Okay, let's uh, compile this solution. It successfully runs um, on the example test case but since the uh, value of n is up to 200,000 um, this solution only passes uh, correctness tests it does not pass performance tests but let's observe that in this solution we are making many redundant computations for instance when we calculate how many coins we can take from the left part uh, which is a prefix of row of uh, stacks of size 3, uh, we are calculating the same information for shorter prefixes. So actually we will calculate this information for the part of size 2 and the part of size 1. That means we can calculate the information about all the prefixes in linear time. We can do the same procedure for all the suffixes of right parts and after that, we can find the answer using one additional linear loop. And the changes in the implementation are pretty easy. The helper function will no longer return one value, but uh, the whole array of intermediate values. And we will use this uh, function in order to uh, calculate the array for the prefixes and the array for suffixes but here we must remember to reverse uh, the array of uh, uh, stacks and also at the end when we get the um, array of suffixes it also be reversed so we need to reverse it one more time. 
So now we don't need to uh, analyze uh, the parts anymore. We just take uh, the value of the i prefix and the value of the i suffix. Okay, let's run the tests. And this solution is uh, linear time and will get full score when tested by Codility.